So, in the morning I got on the old chugging ferry and went across the blue water of the Palk Straits and arrived in Sri Lanka. And um, near the pier was a ra railway station with two officers, um, uh, customs officers. I walked in there and they asked me for my passport, which I gave them, and they said, where's your Sri Lankan passport? I said, I'm a monk, I don't have a, I don't have one. So this created some difficulties. And also then they asked me how much money have they got? And I said, I've got about uh, 60 paisa, <laughs> which is as nothing. And he said, wait here, and he went away. And he came back and he gave me a, um, an entry visa and uh, some time later a man came up and gave me a ticket to Colombo and so I had my first experience of the great regard and general hospitality and kindness Sri Lankan people have towards strangers and visitors and particularly towards monks. When I arrived in, um, in Colombo Venerable um, uh, Sangaratana in Sravasti had given me the address of a friend of his who happened to be a senior monk. And so I made my way by, by foot. I'd arrived in a Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. There were virtually no people in the street. And, and the whole city, Colombo, looked very woebegone and, and uh, messy and it, it didn't look at all like a healthy city. <laughs> And I arrived in, uh, after about an hour's walking, I, and asking a few people, I arrived at Sri Lanka Vidyale, which turned out to be um, one of the better monastic colleges in, um, in uh, Sri Lanka. And uh, the, the abbot there, Venerable um, Badigama Wimalawansa, uh, quite an eminent scholar, he'd already received a letter from Venerable Sangaratana saying that I was coming. He welcomed me, he gave me a room, and for the next year, I lived there. And um, I didn't join any of the classes. First of all, they were all in Sinhala. Secondly, I'd have to say that my knowledge of Buddhism was probably already better than most of the students there. What I did not know was, uh, was Pali. So basically, um, one of the senior monks there took me under his wing and he gave me sort of, as it were, private tuition. I then joined the Colombo um, Public Library, which was not very far away. I also, sometime later, I joined, I became a member of the Royal Asiatic Society, which had a truly magnificent library. And these were my resources. And over the next 12 months, I completely absorbed myself in, in Buddhism. Now, I mentioned before that when I was in India, for the most part, I, I went Pindacharya. So I had done that the whole time I was in India and I never had any problems. So um, for the first few days in this uh, monastic college, I, I attended the Dana Sala where all the monks congregated together for their meals. And the meals were just... <laughs> absolutely dreadful. And one of the reasons for this was that they had the, the economy in Sri Lanka at that time was in chaos and there were chronic food shortages. You couldn't get anything. You couldn't get milk. It was quite difficult to get sugar. So because there was, and there was rationing. So the best option, of course, was to go for arms begging. Virtually immediately I realized that this, is, this custom has died out in Sri Lanka. So in Burma, Thailand, Laos and Cambodia, it's quite normal to see monks in the street going along early in the morning with their begging bowl. You don't see that in Sri Lanka. It's virtually non-existent. As a Western monk going through the streets with a begging bowl, I attracted, <laughs> I attracted crowds. And where Sri Lanka Vidale was, was in Maradana, which was a very poor suburb of the city. And I remember in particular one very, very old Sinhala lady seeing me and looking at me open-eyed and she indicated to me to stay there and she disappeared and she came back 
with a small banana which was black. <laughs> and with great reverence, she put it in my bowl. And that was quite an experience for me. It made me think, these people don't have much, but the best they have, they'll give to you. And that probably was the best she had. And they'll give it to you because even though they may not, or they may feel that they cannot practice the Dhamma fully, they have great reverence for you because they think you are practicing the Dhamma fully. And that experience made me think, it doesn't matter what happens, to the best of my ability, I will try to be uh, worthy of that simple gift that that woman gave me. Anyway, so I, I stayed there for um, a year and um, after a year I, I wanted to explore more of the country and I, I felt that the monastic life in a big college uh, wasn't for me. Um, and so I started uh, sometimes to make trips out to the countryside. I went to Kandy and other places and that. And eventually I, I decided for various reasons to um, move to Kandy, which is the old royal capital of Sri Lanka, up in the hills, where the, the climate is quite pleasant, as opposed to Colombo, where it's pretty mm, humid and hot. And, and um, I um, asked around, I found a temple where they would allow me to stay, and then I, I started living there. And once again, I, I went for Pindacharya, right? and uh, very soon uh, I got fairly well known. I was the only uh, Suduhamdru, or Western monk, in the area, and so it attracted a lot of attention. 